continue. This just this week on one passage and, and finish the passage. Uh, Romans chapter one. Where were we? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah three. Yes. Mm. Isaiah three verses eight to ten. Jerusalem staggers. Judah is falling. Mm. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying His glorious presence. Yep. The look on their faces testifies against them. Mm. They parade their sin like Sodom. Mm. They do not hide it. Mm. Woe to them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. My God. Tell the righteous, yeah. it will be well with them, mm -hmm. for they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. Praise God. Please say, say it with me. It shall be well with the righteous. It shall be well with the righteous. Not only will God rescue you, from all the chaos that's going on. But the Bible says, you will enjoy the fruit of your work. That's what I'm God. You will prosper in the midst of chaos. In other words, God is bringing judgment upon Judah for them parading their sin, for their gloom, for, for, for their defiance against the presence of God. God is bringing judgment upon them. But God says, nevertheless, it shall be well with the righteous. That is why I keep saying to you, you don't have to call threat what this world calls threat. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Be distinct. Mm -hmm. Be distinct. That is why we, we don't want you to entertain. Listen, you cannot enjoy it shall be well with me while you are enjoying the parading. Hey, the parading of sin that is going on. No, no, no. You need to decide which side are you on. Yeah. Are you on the side of the rushes or are you on the side of those that are being entertained by sin? Praise the name of Jesus. Now during this time you will prosper. Praise God. Hallelujah. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. That is why please tend to anybody and say work hard, work hard. Keep on working. Keep on working. In other words, even when judgment is falling, when God says go to work, you go to work. And there will be fruitfulness as you work. Praise the name of Jesus. Keep working, keep working, don't stop working. Remember, it is the instruction of your master who said, you must occupy till I come. We will never stop occupying, beloved. We will work hard in business, we will, we will work hard, hallelujah. In the companies where you are employed, please don't just relax and say, Jesus is coming back. No, 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 work hard. If you are a student, pass those exams. Hallelujah. If you're a student, we are not just going to be sitting and say, how oh, do I, I don't feel like studying. I feel like rapture is about to take place any time. No, 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 no. That's the lie from the enemy. When Jesus comes, he must find you studying, dear student. There must be no student who's going to be putting off the foot or, or, or of the pedal just because you feel Jesus is coming back. You are now not wanting to study. What if he comes back in five years from, in time from now? Yeah. You will have missed out on your years of study. Praise the name of Jesus. So let's work hard. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm very excited, beloved. I'm so comforted to know that it doesn't matter what happens to the economy of Babylon. Oh, yes. But I will enjoy the fruit of my labor. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because the economy of heaven does not depend on the world's economy. Right now, there is the buzzword is inflation, inflation, recession, inflation, everywhere. Economies are collapsing, but we insist it shall be well with the Russians. They will enjoy the fruit of their labor, and this is where we put our faith. Amen. When someone asks you, what is your hope? Why are you hopeful when the whole world is hopeless? This is our hope. It shall be well with the Russians. Amen. Amen. And then let's read Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, you are still encouraged to walk in faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. And without faith, it is impossible mm -hmm. to please God. Yeah. Because anyone who comes to him mm. must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God will reward us as we diligently seek him. Even during the time of adversity, don't stop seeking God. Yeah. I, I was so disappointed during COVID.
that a lot of people decided to worry about COVID at the expense of their devotions, at the expense of seeking God. He's continued to seek God, even if the stars are falling, even if the moon turns dark, even if the sun turns dark, continue to seek God. Never stop seeking God. That is why we are saying all the filth that comes from our television set, we're not going to be entertaining that filth. Why? Because we are highly focused. Mm. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And as you do that, the Bible says you will be rewarded. Amen. Amen. Sure. You will be rewarded. Amen. Don't miss out on those rewards. Amen. Please stay focused. Yeah. Stay focused, Pastor. Amen. We, 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 we are not going to be focusing on monkeypox viruses. We're not going to be focusing on all these things that are happening because these are things that are trying to compete for your attention. Yeah. Jesus demands your attention. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. We will diligently seek God. Because those that have faith must first believe that he exists. And secondly, they must seek him diligently. Mm. Amen. Amen. So God will make a way for the Russians. Amen. While he punishes the disobedient at the same time. What you need to accept is that this can happen at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. This can happen at the same time. So you will see the collapse of the earthly kingdoms and institutions on the other side. But on the other side, you will see the prosperity of the Russians. Please, make peace with that dichotomy. Make peace with that. And then the, 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 here's another very important thing. This is a season when your light should be shining even more brightly. Hallelujah. If ever there was a time, let me go to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Please don't dim your light. Don't dim your light. That is why we, we are after the things you are watching, things that you are feeding yourself with, beloved, so that your light can shine even brightly, more brightly. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. I'll say it with me. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now here's the thing, please be aware that darkness is scared of the light. It should, it should not be the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. It should not be the other way around. Darkness is scared of the light. Amen. Let us read on more. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Mm -hmm. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Mm -hmm. Instead, they put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. I want us to make this. I want us to make this comparison. While they are parading their sin, yeah. parade your righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When all these people who are practicing immorality are coming out of the closet, yeah. come out of the closet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. The Bible says, "You are the light of the world." Yeah. How dare do you do you prefer to be hidden? Don't be apologetic that you are a child of God. Please be unashamedly saved. Be unashamedly righteous. President of Jesus, be clear that I'm a child. Be known in your workplace that you are a child of God. In the school where you're at, be known that you are a child of God. Don't apologize. Because men and women of this world are not apologizing for their demonic activities. Even the devil worshippers are coming out of the closet. They are coming out of the shadows. Why are Christians hiding? I pray that you do not hide during this season. Present of Jesus. Hallelujah. May they see you. People need to know that they are still a remnant. Of men and women who are walking uprightly before God. Hallelujah. Elijah once said, I'm the only one. You know why? Because the true prophets were hiding in the caves. And he thought I was the only one. And he was shocked when God says, no, 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 no. There is 7,000 more people who have not bowing knee to bow. It's almost like Elijah said, where are they? Where are they? How come Jezebel is on my case? I'm the only one who, that Jezebel is chasing after. I pray in Jesus' name that you arise, 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 arise. Where you are, where, where, sometimes there's something that I've witnessed, especially in the workplace, when a believer is being attacked by non-believers. Yeah. And then you find that there are other believers in the same space, and they just pretend that they don't know. Sure. 
They just don't know what, what, what people are talking about. People are, pe people are busy hammering your fellow brother or sister in the Lord. And you just pretend like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? And here's the thing. If, 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 you, if you refrain from revealing your identity in, in a, in, in a non-threatening atmosphere, how are you going to reveal your identity when you're threatened? If you're scared of declaring that I'm a child of God, I'm born again, I love Jesus, when there are no guns, how will you do it when people are pointing guns at you? So somebody you, start practicing being unashamedly Christian. Listen, say this with me, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Have you noticed that we almost know everyone where they stand spiritually? You can tell this is a Muslim. Ah. But sometimes when it comes to believers, you just don't know. You just don't know. Everybody's are we, are, 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 we, are we together? Yeah. Yeah. You know, do I know you? Do you know me? Yeah. You know, so please, beloved, I pray that this be clear. Amen. Amen. Read on, Mama Pastor. It says, A city built on a hill, mm. let your light shine before others. Yeah. That they may see your good deeds mm -hmm. and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. We're not going to hide anymore, beloved. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When it gets very dark, it's not the season for the church to hide. But it's the season for us to shine even more brightly. Let us seal this message by Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. Praise God. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. During the time of adversity, you must shine. Praise God. This is your moment of shining. Hallelujah. Amen. Arise. Yeah. Shine. For your light has come. Please don't be offended as I interrupt, Mom Pasek. That word arise simply means rise from your recumbent position. It's almost like you are sleeping. You are in a recumbent position. The, 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 the instruction here is that you cannot shine while you are sleeping. So, we're not just going to be hiding in this season, we will also come out of our slumber. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because we have two problems in the church. You have a hiding church, and then you have a church in slumber. And we need to address both these issues. Come out of your hiding, and come out of your slumber. So, you, you rise up. You stand to your feet. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because we will not, we will not shine the light of the Father as long as we're in spiritual slumber. So, please read on now. For your light has come. Yeah. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. My God. See, darkness covers the earth. Uh -huh. And thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you. Mm -hmm. And his glory appears over you. My God. Nations will come to your light. Yeah, yeah. And kings to the brightness of your dawn. Nations are waiting for the church to arise. Amen. Believe me, even though they are putting up a brave face and pretend like they know what they're doing, they don't know what they're doing. They are desperately waiting for a man and a woman of God to rise up. Hallelujah. And I pray in Jesus' name that you do not deprive the world of the solutions they're looking for. This is your moment. Do you see darkness covering the earth? That means it's your moment. It's your moment. Because there is no better contrast, there is no better background contrast for light than darkness. Hallelujah. Do you know that if you go outside with the sun out and shine the light, no one will appreciate it. Yeah. But when it gets dark, that's when you will appreciate the light. Yes. And I pray in Jesus' name that you may not miss your moment. Yes. This is your moment to shine. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And then when you shine, the kings of the earth that are nourishing in darkness will then come to your light. Are you aware that even the presidents and the heads of states are waiting for you? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
May you not flee from darkness. You are not made to flee from darkness. Praise the name of Jesus. Here's another thing about times of adversity. They tend to activate the supernatural. Hallelujah. I love that. When darkness covers the earth and when there is adversity, all of a sudden there is an atmosphere for the supernatural to, ma to manifest. Hallelujah. The, the, this is the passage my pastor would like us to read in the book of Psalm 34, verses 17 to 19. Psalm 34, verses 17 to 19. Can someone who hates justice govern? Okay, this is Psalm 34, verses 17 to 19. Hallelujah. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. Mm -hmm. He delivers them from all their troubles. Hallelujah. The Lord is close to mm -hmm. the brokenhearted. Yeah and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Praise God. The righteous person may have many troubles, mm. but the Lord delivers him from them all. Hallelujah. I love this. Your brokenness will attract God's presence. Amen? Amen. Whatever situation has caused brokenness, it will naturally attract God's presence. Why? Because the Lord is close to those that are brokenhearted. Those that are crushed in their spirit, whatever is crushing you, God wants to pay attention. But here is a condition for that to happen. You need to cry out to Him. In other words, my brokenness can never attract God's presence that will result in divine intervention. In other words, you have a situation where there is brokenness and people are crushed in their spirit and then God, God, God shows up. But up until you cry out to him in faith, there will be no intervention. Oh, yeah. So what I'm you. He is close. Yes, he is close. Because you see, he is naturally a compassionate God. Yeah. He is a merciful God. He is a God who is full of loving kindness. So whenever there is a crushing of spirits, whenever there is brokenness, that will attract his attention. But when he comes, please do us a favor. Cry to him. That is why your pity party is not going to save you. Yeah. Telling your friends how broken things are is not going to help you. You need to cry to him. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Call upon the name of the Lord. So during this time, when everybody is watching the news and complaining about what's going on and this going on in Russia, this happening in, in Ukraine, the food prices, as people are murmuring and complaining, don't participate. Cry out to God, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, won't you come and intervene in our brokenness, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. This is so important. You must cry out to God. Hallelujah. I've come to realize as well that as you cry out to God and God begins to do the supernatural, when he begins to perform the supernatural, don't prescribe to him what he should do. There's what I've got. Let him intervene his way. Please, no matter how charismatic you are, remember that God is God. Yeah. You know, sometimes the challenge with charismatics is that we are so pumped up in our faith. We begin to tell God, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, I want you to do this. Yeah. So, Dr. Yeah, there, there is a story of adversity that uh, always fascinates me. And, <laughs> and God, God, sometimes God can, can have a lot of humor. <laughs> I love the humor of God. Imagine a man like Elijah. There has been famine for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Things are bad, blood. Things are horrible. And the man is hungry. And then God sends the ravens. You know, ravens are unclean birds. These are scavenging birds. They're scavengers. They eat dead things. Yes. Even in the Jewish culture, they are unclean. That's right. And then God has the humor to send an unclean bed yeah. to someone who is Jewish. And it was not kosher. <laughs> but he sends this bed full of meat. And Elijah looks at this bed I wish it was a dove. Yeah. But a raven. Yeah. But God then, God, 
the very bed, the very bed we, 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 we take for granted, God sends it. Please, don't package your miracles. Allow God to do the packaging. And many times, God will actually undermine all the stereotypes in your head when He performs your miracles. Because, in, in actual fact, when God performs a miracle, He's not just bringing something that you need at that point in time. There are stereotypes that He wants to deal with, even in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's another man who nearly missed out on his healing. Do you remember him? Naaman. He nearly missed out on his healing. Why? Because the instruction was go and dip yourself in the river Jordan seven times. You know what this man says? This is not the kind of miracle I was hoping for. Because there are better rivers where I come from in Damascus. The river Jordan is a bit murky. It's not so clean. Where I come from in Damascus, there are powerful rivers. At least, man of God, you should have asked me to go dig myself there. Do you know? He refused. He refused. He, in other words, he says, I would rather keep my leprosy than dig myself in River Jordan. Up until his servant girl spoke sense to him and said, You know what? Maybe you should obey the instruction after all. It was almost like God was not just wanting to heal Naaman of his leprosy, but he wanted to deal with his attitude. God is very wise. He will not just give you what you want, but he will deal with your attitude as well in the process. Hmm? Talk about hitting two plates with one stone. Hallelujah. So that is how some of our miracles are packaged by the Lord. Amen. During this time, therefore, you better keep your heart open. You probably may not like Noctula that much. But during this time of need, God will bring Noctula to you. And you cannot, you cannot say, Lord, why didn't you send Samge? At least Samge and I are getting. I've seen again Abazalwani refusing help simply because it came via wrong packaging. At least in their minds. At least in their minds. And people sometimes would rather settle for suffering. You suffer because you don't like the way it's packaged. And I pray in Jesus' name that you be liberated from that. Time. In this season, Lord, don't tell God what to do. He knows. He's God. Just tell him. Cry out to him. Father, I need help. I need help. Just, uh, just like Tendo's uh, testimony. She says, I want to work in Deben. And God says, you know, maybe you have an assignment in my respect. Are you hearing me? So let's be flexible as we receive from the Lord. Here's another exciting thing. During this time, there will be wealth transfer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <coughs> During this time, there will be wealth transfer, beloved. And I want you to understand, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, all kingdoms are being shaken, but the kingdom that we are receiving, the kingdom that we are inheriting, can never be shaken. In Haggai chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, God says, silver is mine. Gold is mine while I'm shaking nations. Remember that silver is mine, gold is mine, and then he says the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former. Amen. So the wealth transfer that is taking place right now is very much connected to the house of the Lord. When you receive whatever wealth you receive, remember that God has his house in mind. I want to repeat that. When we talk about wealth transfer, God does not have Lamborghinis. He does not have Ferraris in mind. But he has his house in mind. Now here's the thing that I want to say to you. Ask yourself, for this which I'm receiving right now, Father, what is the connection to your house? What is the connection to your kingdom? So that you don't miss that. So it's about time that you start dreaming kingdom dreams. Hallelujah. Many of us are not receiving because our visions are very narrow. Whatever you're about to receive, you're thinking of a big house. Whatever you're about to receive, you're thinking of a bigger car, and you cannot think beyond that. All you're thinking about, if I can receive a vacation. A vacation. And God is saying, no, 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 you are receiving this for my house. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So th th this is the moment, beloved, which is very critical. When God favorably predisposed the hearts of the Egyptians to a point where they would just give everything to the nation of Israel, it was because God had his tabernacle in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they missed the point. That's why they built, they erected the, the golden calf. They erected the golden calf because they did not understand that between wealth, in, 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 with regards to wealth, the connection is to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, right. What do I mean by the house of the Lord, beloved? God wants us to do kingdom business. Amen. There are souls to be won. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. There are, there are disciples to be made. Praise God. And, and this is what it says. Same book of Isaiah, Mount Pastor, read us Isaiah, uh, chapter 60, verses 5 to 7. Bear with me. I'll, I just need uh, just uh, five minutes of your time so that we finish this off. Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 5 to 7. Glory to God. Save us and help us with your right hand. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah, chapter 60, oh, verses 5 to 7. I'll just read quickly. It says, Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and soar with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you. Hallelujah. That is wealth transfer. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Hallelujah. Amen. Heads of camels will cover your land. Those are vehicles. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Your camels, they, but they're not for your, for, for your selfish consumption. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. You will find out just now. Praise God. Your camels and Midian and Ephraim and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense uh -huh, and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All the Kedah's flocks will be gathered to you. The realms of Nebaoth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar and I will adorn my glorious temple. Connection. You are receiving and receiving and receiving, but you must read up until verse 7. Because when you receive, you will misuse. Yeah. Up until you understand the purpose. The purpose is to adorn the glorious temple. Yes, what I got. Please make sure that every kingdom acquisition is connected to the kingdom assignment that God has called you to accomplish. Hallelujah. Now, we are seeing this happening in the natural. Right now, we have a situation where Russia has stopped the pumping of gas to Europe. And as a result of this, Israel has stepped in and said, okay, if uh, Russia is no longer pumping gas to Europe, we will give gas to Europe. Do you know what that means? It means Israel is about to be one of the richest nations on earth. Israel is about to experience wealth transfer. Are you hearing me, beloved? They have this agreement with Europe, European Union up until 2030. For the next eight, eight years, Israel will be pumping gas to Europe. They will be very wealthy after this and in this process. And I want you to appreciate that Israel is God's clock prophetic clock. Mm -hmm. Whatever, if you want to know what God is doing, you must look at the nation of Israel. Yes. If Israel is about to experience wealth transfer, yeah. I want you to know that the church is about to experience wealth transfer. Yeah. The reason for Israel experiencing wealth transfer, please get this right, it is to build the third temple. Yeah. Yes, what yeah. The third temple is about to be built. Amen? Yeah. So that is why God is actually, I want you to appreciate that God is actually allowing the Western imperialist powers to, to collapse during this time. Yeah. The Western economy is collapsing so that there will be wealth transfer mm -hmm. to the nation of Israel and to the church. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Now, theirs is to build the third temple and yours is to win souls. Amen. Amen. The house that is not built with brick and mortar we are to win souls. We must use our money to plant churches. We must use our money to, to evangelize and to make disciples. Hallelujah. 
that is why one of the things that we, even the vehicles, the cameras that we're speaking about here, it is not for you to just drive around in the township. Can you see my ride? You know, no, 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 no. You are not parading your ride, but you are now given resources so that you do kingdom business and do it well. I will not be surprised if those cameras include private planes that God will give to ministries. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. So that we don't struggle to reach unrich places. So I'm not telling you. I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm personally ready for a private jet. I'm ready for it. And I, I, to me, to me, to me. Let, let me say this to you. Did I show some of you? <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It does not even excite me. It does not excite me at all. A private jet does not excite me. You know why? Because I'm thinking of the work that is cut out for us. I'm thinking of things that need to be done right now. And we are behind schedule, by the way. We are way behind schedule. Yeah. When I'm thinking of churches that we need to plant, when I'm thinking of where we are supposed to be having evangelism, crusades, be beloved, we are way behind. It does not excite me to have a private, a private church because I see a resource for the kingdom that we just need to use, move up and down up until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, fulfilling kingdom purpose. Yeah, Praise the Lord Jesus. Where, where we're doing farming, we will speak a lot of time, but much will I say, we need to evangelize this place. Yeah. And right now we're just allowing the favor of traditional authorities to grow. So that by the time we say to them, now that we've planted beans for you, can we allow us to, can you allow us to preach the gospel yeah. to, your, to, to your tribe? Help us to preach to this tribe. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we, we, we will be doing that in the, in the North Coast, doing it in the South Coast, we'll be doing it in the Eastern Cape, and we need some movement. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that's where the private jet comes in. <laughs> and it does not excite me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can't be popping champagne. <laughs> celebrating things that are meant for the kingdom. And, 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 and you know, let's, 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 let's go to work. Amen. We're praying for more vehicles. We're praying for more vehicles. Let's go to work. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I pray that you may discover the connection of your vision to the resources that you are about to receive. Right. Amen. Amen. And then here's another thing. I pray that the Lord may help us to forgive whoever you're not talking to. Please begin to speak to me. I pray in Jesus' name that your heart be cleared of any bitterness and grudges because in this season we will have to have things in common. Praise the Lord Jesus. We will have to share things. Here's the thing about wealth transfer. Not every one of you will experience it. Not every one of you will experience it. Yeah. This whole thing depends on how faithful you have been with resources. Yeah. To whom that much is given, much is required. So I'm not telling you. But here's the thing, even if you don't experience wealth transfer, because there is love in this house, we will benefit from each other's resources. Praise the name of Jesus. They had everything in common. Acts chapter 2, they had everything in common. And that is why, don't even, the, I pray that there be no spirit of competition and jealousy. Yes. When the wealth transfer begins to unfold, may you find yourself not competing yes. with your fellow brother. Because her blessing is her blessing. Yes. His blessing is her blessing. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. They have everything in common. Let, let me just quickly read the scripture. Sorry, we're rushing against time. I want us to, 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 to have the right mentality. Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. It says, all believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had with great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, all that they were, such that there were no needy persons among them. Mm -hmm. For from time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them, brought them money from the sales and put it at the feet of the apostles. Mm -hmm. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. I pray that if this is not happening in other churches, may it happen yet Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. May it happen. That is why I pray that you open up, open up, open up. Let us have a window into your life. Hallelujah. 
We must know what you need. Let's talk. Let's talk. And, and I pray in Jesus' name that even at home cell, show up at your home cell meeting. You cannot seclude yourself. You cannot isolate yourself and then have this common life happening. Shared life. If you isolate yourself, the enemy will catch up with you. And I pray in Jesus' name that you may enjoy. Enjoy your home cells. We're meeting on Thursday. Go to your home cell. If you don't have any transport, speak to somebody so that you can plug into this common life. Believe me, in the book of Acts, I'm sure there were one or two believers who isolated themselves. Sure. And they were missing out on church community life that is so rich. Sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. Please, don't hide yourself. Your tendency not to show up at church mm. is going to bite you. Mm. Yeah. Yes? Mm. Yeah. Amen. That is why the scripture says, don't give up fellowship. Yeah. As some of you are in the tendency of doing. So you cannot have this shared life, beloved when you are isolating yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll close with this. When we have mastered this area of sharing resources as the church, that is why I'm saying to you, whatever belongs to me no longer excites me. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it doesn't excite I, I rejoice. I'm thankful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful to the Lord for everything I'm about to receive. Mm -hmm. But I am not carnally excited. I'm not currently excited to a point that now the Okombis would have arrived. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I'm go I've gone way past that. Amen. Because I know in, in the back of my mind, whatever I have does not just belong to me. Yes, it belongs to the body of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you should not struggle to give a lift to people. Yeah. Yes. If your vehicle is only for you and you only, something is wrong. Sure. If your house cannot be opened up, for people to come and have fellowship, something is wrong. Don't be like that person who is always making people uncomfortable when they, whenever they visit you. You don't know, remember the person? I made this example. People come to your house, you start sweeping at their feet. You start sweeping at their feet and then they stand up to make way for you. And then you sweep as they stand up until they're at the door and then you sweep it in more. <laughs> Open your space. Amen. Open your space. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Love people. Amen. Love people. Here's the thing, beloved. There is a connection that I see in scripture as I close. There is a very interesting connection between the spirit of generosity and the flow of the anointing. Sure. One of the reasons why God killed Ananas and survival is because it was not just a, self, a social welfare issue. They were interfering with the flow of the anointing by withholding. And I'm convinced, I said this in our Bible study, I am convinced that no matter how much you can pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, if you are not willing to share your resources, you are not creating a favorable environment for the flow of the anointing. Generosity is very much linked to the flow of the anointing. Listen to this, listen to this. In the, in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 43 to 45, it says, Everyone was filled with awe for the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. I want you to note many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And I want you to notice this. All believers were together and had everything in common. Those two statements are related. Those two statements, if you want to see the flow of the anointing, there must be generosity in the house. I even make this joke that sometimes you get stingy intercessors. Sure. Stingy person. Stingy intercessor. You, you are calling on things that you are not supposed to be calling on. If you want the power to flow, let us walk in God's love and kindness. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't shine. Don't shine. Don't shine. Stay to your feet. Let's stay on our feet.
How many of you are ready for what God is about you to do? Praise God. I pray that you experience it. May these things be not for the next generation. May they be for your generation. Let's lift up our hands. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we believe that the just shall live by faith. We believe, Father, that while the world is mourning what's happening and they are crying over the economies, they are crying over political unrest, we are excited about what you're about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we see, Father, what you are about to do in, in the area of soul reading, in the area of discipleship. We see, oh God, the world transfer and we are excited in Jesus' mighty name that there will be enough resources for us to carry out our kingdom assignments in Jesus mighty name thank you father and I pray in Jesus mighty name that every kingdom person may stand up and be counted during this time in Jesus name we are ready father do it oh God do it in Jesus name none of us shall be in want the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want thank you father that we will never be stranded during this time even if the food prices are skyrocketing you are taking care of us and I pray, Father, that may we have eyes to see those that I need so that we can step in and help. I pray the spirit of selfishness, the spirit of inconsideration, the spirit of, 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 of just wanting to do things only for ourselves. I pray in Jesus' name for that spirit of generosity. May your love for God just overflow in this congregation. In Jesus' mighty name, help us to be concerned about what's happening with our brother, with our sister. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, as you give us the heart for people. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hands. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the fields. You are blessed in the country. You are blessed wherever you are. In Jesus' mighty name. Whatever you put your hands on, may the blessing of the Lord manifest. May you see fruitfulness in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless the work of your labor in the name of Jesus. Your toiling, your sweating may pay dividends in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that you may walk in total obedience to the word of God. Whatever God instructs you to do, may you do it diligently in Jesus' mighty name. May you seek his face and may you see the reward of the Lord in the land of the living in Jesus' mighty name. You are heads and you are not tails. You are above circumstances and not under. You will be blessed even when the whole world is collapsing. You will never cease to see the goodness of the Lord. You will see the fruitfulness of the Lord in your life in Jesus' mighty name. The just shall live by faith, and may you be counted among those that shall live by faith. Yes. If you believe the promises of God, say Amen. Amen. Let me hear you say Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.